What's up, guys? This is Ryan Johnson with MoneyBass.com. Back again, guys. Let's get into it. As you know, if you are a long-term subscriber or you are recently subscribed to the channel, we will get into an episode of How Would You Fish It? where we um, pretty much review a video clip of me out on the water. The majority of the time, it will be some type of electronics tutorial, guys. So if you are into that type of thing, want to get better out on the water, this is the place for you. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and the like button on your way in. So if you are not familiar with the process, what I will do is first play the video clip for you. Um, it may have a little bit of talking in there. Um, and this is actual footage from a tournament, recent tournament that I was in. So we will review that clip. In that clip, you will take a look at the water temp, water depth, and of any other information that you feel is pertinent to deciding which bait or lure of choice you would use. And in this one, guys, what would be the one bait that you use? Can't use one bait, then follow it with another one. You are going to pick one bait. How would you fish that bait in order to get the fish out of the um the cover or structure that we're looking at and into the boat. All right, guys, so let's go ahead and pull up this video clip. I'll play it through as usual without me saying anything. Then I will follow that up with um, me just adding my commentary onto it and let you know how I fished it and show you a bait, um, the bait and setup that I would um, go with on that one. All right, guys, let's, let me go ahead and pull up the video clip and let's get into it. I'm fishing that is what you're seeing on the 360 and up here if I pan around on the mega live you kind of see that same structure there you go you see the fish in there moving around just got to get them out of there I got pulled down in there and broke off it was a decent fish didn't get a chance to see it but wish I had got that one to the boat but there you go guys if any of you guys are interested in seeing what kind of cover and structure I look for when I'm out here. There you go on the 360. All right, so that is the video clip, guys. All right, so what did you see? What did you notice? Please get active down in the comment section. Uh, oh, also, as always, make sure you check the descriptions. Um, let me make sure I pause that real quick. All right, yeah, so make sure you check the description. If there are any discounts available on any lures or anything that I discuss in the videos, I always put links to those um, to those products in the, in the link in the description section, guys. So make sure you take a look at that. And also the comments. The guys that support my channel are always active in the comments. There's some very good information. Always some good tips. If you have questions or anything like that, make sure you put it in the comment se uh, section. I reply to all of my comments, guys. And also my subscribers may chime in every once in a while to add a little bit to it. So it's always a good thing to look into. All right, so let me go ahead and pull the video clip back up and I will play this and just kind of discuss a few things as it is playing. <clears throat> just so you guys can see it from my point of view and let you know how I would fish this situation. All right, so let's go ahead and get this started. All right, so here we go, guys. Let's go ahead and get started on this. So if you take a look directly at the, I would say the 12 o'clock range on that 360, you see this structure. There's a lot of structure, well, a lot of cover on here. So this is a pretty significant brush pile and you can see some other branches and things in here. And over to, I would say the left side, Maybe that is what the two o'clock range. You can see where I put a few waypoints on there. And that is just to give me a general idea of where I want to um, place my cast. So that 360 kind of gives me a broad view without me doing any other work. It's going to continually scan and allow me to see everything that I, um, you know, everything that I have access to within the, uh, what is it set at? It is set at 60 feet out. So everything within 60 feet of the boat, it will give me a good picture that I can use. And from there, I would take that live and just pan it to the left and right, just to see different areas where the structure, where the, the cover may be thicker. And I can actually kind of dial it in and see the fish moving around within that structure. So that will allow me to dictate where I want to cast. So let's go ahead and continue taking a Drum look at fishing, it. That is what you're seeing on the 360. And up here, if I pan around on the mega live, you 
kind of see that same structure there. Let me pause it right there. There you go, guys. Right at the, I would say, towards the right side of that screen, you see that bright kind of blip right there at the at the top, right above all of the cover. That is a nice size fish, guys. But also the other thing that I noticed while I was looking at it is there are a lot of fish that are actually down in the cover. So do I want to target that one fish? Yeah, maybe. But I know there are more fish down in that cover from what I can see. And remember, we are going off of one bait. What one bait would you use to try to catch multiple fish in this situation? All right, let's go ahead and continue to play it. You see the fish in there moving around. Just got, got to get them out of there. I got pulled down in there and broke off. It was a decent fish. Didn't get a chance to see it, but wish I had got that one to the boat. All right, so think about that. I got pulled down into that cover. Had to break the fish off. Wasn't able to get it to the boat. All right, let's keep going. But there you go, guys. If any of you guys are interested in seeing what kind of cover and structure I look for when I'm out here, there you go on the 360. All right, so that is the end of that clip. I'm going to go ahead and pause that. All right, guys, so there you go. What was the water depth on that? Let's see. I didn't take a look at that. Let me pull it back up real quick. Let's see. So pretty shallow. We're in about seven feet. Seven, so it's probably about seven to ten feet, depending on where where um, the the structure is, where the cover is in that, in that shot. So from my perspective, guys, I will take a look at that, and I see that one fish ab above that, and I know that if I pitch something out there and I can get it close enough to that fish, it will follow it down into that um, that brush pile. And a lot of times those fish will follow that bait down. Once they get it, um, follow it all the way down to the bottom, they feel that they have that bait kind of pinned. It, it's kind of like a, I would say, kind of like a predatorial instinct where it feels like it has that bait cornered. As soon as that bait twitches again, they'll be on it if they're very active. If not, then you just kind of have to fish it through there. So the bait that I would choose, guys, is a texas rig there we go let me show that to you so i have a texas rig z crawl on this right here and with the the bait i will put a um this is a one eighth so i will have like a very light weight so maybe a one eighth or a three sixteenth because i want something that will not sink down into that cover or in, or into that brush pile real deep to where you have a higher chance of either getting hung up or if that fish gets a hold to it, you won't be able to get the fish out because the bait itself, the weight of the bait itself has already kind of dug down into that brush pile. Um, I also like to add a bead on there so it'll make kind of like a rattling sound if I just kind of shake it, if I want to leave it in place and shake it. And I put a bobber stopper on there and that will allow me, I can move that bobber stop, stopper up or down depending on how much um, free fall I want to give that bait as it's working its way through that brush pile and the rod setup that i use this is a seven foot extra heavy I, I actually in open water depending on if it's not close to docks or anything like that guys sometimes i'll actually bump this up to a 710 extra heavy that's really what i like to use but in this situation sometimes i would be close to docks or uh lay downs things like that so i just went with that seven foot it allows me to maneuver things a little bit better and the reel i like using a high gear ratio reel this is a nine to one abu garcia rocket um the line can't forget about the line 20 pound line guys 20 pound fluorocarbon i want something that is very tough and i can make sure that i can get the fish out of there and even if they hit it and pull me down into that structure i can still keep tension on that line and the chances of it breaking off are not you know are, are not as um likely but you never know what happens sometimes the fish will win those battles guys it's just something we have to deal with um so in the video i mentioned that i did get a fish um pull me down into there i was using 12 pound fluorocarbon at that time so that's why i went ahead and decided to up it to 20 guys all right so hope this have been hope this has been informative and pretty fun and entertaining as usual i am anxiously awaiting to see what you guys put down in the comment section how would you fish it 
Let's get active, guys. Let's see what we come up with. And as always, I appreciate you supporting the channel. Make sure you hit the like button on the way in. If you did, I mean, I'm sorry, on the way out. If you did not hit it on the way in and I will see you guys on the 